And to include the include to enclose the design panel of this morning, I want to introduce to you our good friend Dr. Michel Mastroni. Michel Dr. Michel Mastroni, he is gonna give us a lecture in Spanish. His native language, her his mother, his mother is from Mexico. He is going to be talking about the tension between the organic design and the established design methods. And I want to highlight that Michelle's lecture will be from the academia. And he's saying that the military design can be applicable to all the other fields of power, the political, the economical, psychoshock, social power, communication media. So it's going to be very interesting. It's a broad view from the military, obviously, applied to all the fields of power. So we give uh, the welcome to Michel. Thank you very much. The floor is yours. Muchas gracias. Thank you. I want to thank you all for having me and for giving me the opportunity to present. I want to thank General Buenaventura, General Puentes, General Campo, and General San Miguel, Colonel Rojas, and our dear guests and uh, audience for such a great opportunity. I want to apologize before starting out, just because whereas Spanish is my mother tongue, I have never, ever given a presentation in Spanish. So, well, I might have a, a couple of technical term-related issues, but let's move on and we'll see how, how it goes. So, um, so today I'm going to talk about, we can go to the first slide, the, about the tension between organic design and the established design methods in the sense of military design. As Colonel Rojas said, I do come, or rather, my background is from a civil, academic environment. But here we are going to talk about organic design and how we are trying to apply it to the situation of the Canadian um, armed forces. And this is based on a project that me and my colleagues uh, are researching on about how to create a new design structure for the Canadian Armed Forces, particularly for the needs of the Canadian Armed Forces. And we're also going to take a look at what the tensions are between the already established methods and this organic design. Organic because it is merely being developed based on the context and the needs of the Canadian Armed Forces. A little bit about me. I know Colonel Rojas has already introduced me a little bit. I have a PhD in political sciences from Toronto University. I've worked on academic research and applied research in Canada and the UK. For instance, one of my favorite projects was one I did with the Ministry of Defense in the United Kingdom on how they could improve their innovation capacity by connecting to small sized companies or civilian companies that were not networked before to find new technologies and to build new capacities. What was interesting about this project was that another project also that I've worked on in biotechnology uh, pharmaceuticals and, and so forth, is that we were using design methods without knowing it. And that's a point that I will refer to later on in my presentation. So one of my main projects right now is developing a design system for the Canadian Armed Forces based on needs and local local needs and capacities. Next. So I want to introduce to you organic design. Why do we 
prefer it for the Canadian Air Fo Air Armed Forces. And potentially the same idea for other organizations that might be interested in the design. Of course, it would not be the same method. If it's an organic method, it should be tailor-made to the context of that specific army or, or, or forces. But the idea, the concept, the philosophy may remain. And let us check this concept of design thinking and discuss some differences between the established practices of design and other approaches. Next. I know that many of you already know about this or are aware of this, and my, some of my colleagues have already talked about this, but it's good to, uh, to, to try to define some things about design thinking, particularly for the military world. It ha doesn't have a, like an agreed upon definition. Rather, it is a multidisciplinary method that is uh, suited for complex problems. It is a process, a methodology that has multiple tools and multiple possible outcomes. Of course, we will be seeing that some organizations have uh, their favorite methods or tools, but the truth is in the design world, there are many tools and methods that can be applied to any problem. And this is the method for complex problem. I, here I put wicked in the perverso, but rather than wicked, I wanted to say that very hard. <laughs> and um, we're talking about problems that are ever-changing. And, uh, and there's always an, an element of ambiguity. And no matter what you discover on the field, and that ambiguity comes from the our ever-changing world, whether it's a change on the natural environment, the social conditions, the political conditions. There's always an ambiguity because the setting is changing constantly. So we need to keep that in mind. So we're seeing that in the security environment, we're seeing that problems are increasingly becoming more complex, and or at least we are perceiving more of that complexity now. So what is design thinking? To use your whole brain, as my colleagues have said, using creative thinking, making cognitive connections that normally are not used in uh, linear thinking or strategic planning as a tradition. Also, it is about, as Grant said, it's about involving many parties, many stakeholders, as many as possible, even if they are representatives from parties that are in conflict with us, so that we can broaden our, our understanding, our empathy for and towards others. That word, empathy, is important because we're going to talk about it. And I can, possibly I'll get a reaction from you. But the idea is to get to the root of the issues with this knowledge of all the stakeholders involved those that are directly impacted and those that are directly impacted. And what we see in these complex situations in the political world, the defense world, is that there are some parties that have the power to cause an impact and there are others that are impacted on but cannot themselves cause an impact. These different stakeholders would be considered in our design thinking. Not a, a definition to try to ground it a little bit. You say that design in a military setting is the capacity of understanding a current conflict from a holistic perspective and imagine the desired post-conflict setting 
and how to, do, to achieve it with military means and non-military means. And Philippe Dufour and Philippe Belibosat say so. In fact, this is just a limited definition because it only considers conflict and military conflict. But otherwise, we might be speaking about expanding this definition and looking at all the potential actions of an army. Particularly, for instance, the Canadian army has many challenges ahead, not only military or conflict-related, but also uh, salvage and domestic actions that need to be conducted. Um, and our attention needs to be on uh, political, cultural, and global concepts. So we need to broaden this, uh, expand this definition, and be able to operate in an, a setting of ambiguity and uh, kind of model out the world based on this ambiguity and be always willing to reassess our position. Next. Here we see some of the examples of its use. Um, we know that it started, in fact, with our, uh, our colleagues in Israel, systemic operative design, then U.S., where they updated and modified this concept and created their own design methodology for the Army. This methodology has been criticized because it's been simplified so that it can be taught to more officers or more people or a large group of staff that sometimes it's been oversimplified and so, so sometimes it's harder to assess and to criticize how the strategy's aim is being positioned with respect to command objectives. And that is something that we want to be able to reflect upon, to analyze, and to be sure that we're looking at the problem the right way. This is a critique not only for that method. Any method could have that problem. But in the literature, this is one of the critiques of this method, which is that. In UK and Australia, they also work with design concepts in their own way. And in Canada, I know that my colleagues in the military school uh, are working with different design methodologies, not just a single methodology, but rather to give you a presentation of several methodologies. To provide experience on several methods and tools. And as they have not yet established the doctrine, it is that is why they are presenting several different options. And our objective in this creation of organic design is to create something that can be formalized into doctrine. The point, the takeaway point here is that each design method established reflects an organizational context and culture that is specific. And that is something that we take into account when we are creating this so-called organic method. So what is the appeal of established methods? As my colleagues have mentioned, are present in the doctrine, and that can be read in design literature. One is we are aware of what is there and success reports. I mean, we have examples how things have been done and what successes have they presented. Uh, second, there is a standardization of the approach and it's been applied for a long time. So it's been uh, one decade, two decades of its use and we can see um, how it has been made use of. And as they have been going on for a long time, it should be refined 
fine-tuned and also to have been borne witness of the of its application by different armies. Now, the standard or established methods, of course, have problems. Each method leads to a dif different assumptions or context history, and this, and we're always aware of this. <laughs> it is possible that history or assumptions do not go hand in hand with new new contexts of use. So the method used by uh, generals in Israel it might not be adequate for the Canadian army. In fact, I believe that it is not adequate. But the reasons of a different context or different uh, stories and different assumptions. So, of course, it's better to use some method than not using any. It's always better to have one design method, but if you need to choose or choose a, a, a better one, creating an organic one based on context is important. So this cut-paste uh, cut, cut method can give rise to uh, some things unforeseen with respect to the out, uh, outputs and the practices. It might impose a confusing language on those who are using it, or it might create uh, generate resistance from from junior officers, so to speak. So we have used this design language. Many people who have never used don't feel comfortable with it, either because they don't know how to use it, or because they recognize that they have other methods and have other tools that are very similar. So why would uh, we complicate ourselves by, by looking at all these new concepts? This also goes to my, my civilian and or professional students who are already experienced in their own field and they view these methods and I, they say, I'm not interested in theory, I'm not interested in all these things that are new, just give me a specific tool that I could use in a given situation. Of course, what is happening there is that they don't have a broad capacity or theoretical framework to face any upcoming ambiguity uh, in any given situation. So these are some of the tensions that we are facing. Next. So, you know that Israel and with the SOD, this is a high-level security context. It's a very abstract method, and um, it's very specific. And as Ofra mentioned, it is a, an, an existential danger for Israel, not only for the army, but society as a whole. So that is very different from the Canadian context. Not only that, we can also talk about the differences between the, the networks with, um, among politicians and, and the military. In Canada, there's a, a common network. It's a, but sometimes it's a, a common network. In Canada, it's two separate networks, sorry, that very seldom speak to each other apart from formal methods. They uh, have very different applications. And uh, also, as I was saying, empathy, when I was talking to Ofra, is being looking at how what her reactions and and we can understand that within this context of Israel the term of empathy cannot fit in in the context of Israel. Uh, I mean, empathy for your enemy is no use for anyone. So it's about understanding movements and situations, but no empathy in that case. So I will continue with the Canadian situation, where the army has other missions, sort of peacekeeping missions, war, war missions, anti-terrorism, 
but also provide some home assistance during disaster times or international uh, advice. So there we might find a very useful place for that concept of empathy. In the U.S., as I was telling you with the oversimplification of the method into this ADM method, that comes with an understanding of, of the demand and the training of, of officers. And the skills of officers are changing. The number of officers and the composition of, 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 of groups or squads are, are different. So we are going to see a contextual difference that is important to keep in mind. The third point talks about the different roles of the specifically of the Canadian Armed Forces. So you have to ask yourself, considering the differences between these settings or this environment, would both standard methods of each fit in? Well, no. My argument is no. We need to create these methods. It will take time, but it's important to maintain these differences and uh, create an adequate method. Next. Okay. Finally, we have mentioned a lot of what is this organic design, and this is a method co-generated and specific for the de design thinking. And we are deriving it from the local experience and the organization. And we are doing this through many interviews. We start by this year, we will continue doing that with different officers from different level, mayor, captain, colonel, generals. And also we will start interviewing also sergeants and uh, non-commissional officers. The goal is to adapt this to the organizational goals and to understand better the culture and the context of complex relevant environments. So, we are basically doing design in two levels. The first level is to determine the framework to analyze the environment for the design before giving a solution, and that solution will be the organic design method for the armed forces. So we, as I said, started with the literature, study, the interviews, analyzing the environment that we have and the capacities, existing capacities and the resistance and everything. First, we are defining the framework of the needs of the stakeholders. So we are designing the organic design. And why? Because we will be better to affect and take into consideration the culture and the capacities and the wishes of the stakeholders, so taking into account the experiences of the Canadian Armed Services experience based also on their experiences. It identifies potentially the uh, limitations and needs of the system. And that will help to identify new objectives. And the last point, we are not saying that we are just going to accept that uh, tacit knowledge and their experiences and those Mm, disposals, but we want to identify them, we want to have them present, we want to work with them, and in some situations we will use them 
in order to change them and in case there is if we're talking about the culture to change the culture or to work with uh, this I mean to avoid some uh, assumptions and that's gonna be hard and it's our goal why why we need to do this because we all are working with limited rationality and we all have a limited rationality anyone has a perfect knowledge and our knowledge is defined by our prejudices the social and cultural context and also the capacity to absorb new knowledge is affected by the previous knowledge therefore we have a limited rationality determined to by our circumstances so the method needs to take that into account let's say let's take into account culture culture shape our institutions our social institutions and it has an influence on how we see and how we see the world surrounding us. It has an impact in our values, ethic, moral. Therefore, it is necessary to know the situation and the type of culture that we are working with. There are organizational culture, by culture, based on their interests or socioeconomical context and so on. Oh, sorry, next slide. One more? Thanks. The reasons... Sometimes culture or our assumptions, sometimes we don't realize how that is affecting us. And that's why cut and paste copy and paste is not the best because the values and the standards are not visible we don't even know which they are so we need to study them understand them the best we can to understand why one organization is doing something or a group of people is doing something and then we create this design method around that Design is also important to find the, those things. So we are using a design method to discover all that. And then we will understand the Canadian military environment and to create a design method for them. Why this is important? I'm sorry. This is not the slide I wanted. Okay, okay. Talking about our objective, our organic design, the idea is to match or address the match between the strategic and organizational objectives. Canada role in the considering the game of the big powers, the evolution of the traditional roles, the domestic operation and the uh, diver organizative diversity, equity and restructuration. That last point right now is not the important. I don't know if you have been following Can Canada news. If you know the Canadian uh, Command is going through a crisis right now, and that's going to impact how we are going to see the culture and what we need to change from the Canadian military culture, and of course, try to find a solution for that. Thanks.
And we need to have or understand the tacit knowledge and the organization's experience. This tacit knowledge, the definition is to know the knowledge and doing based on the professional habits, skills, and culture of the individuals. This is relevant to any field challenge and also to identify the organizational issues, the experience, expertise of the members in the orga of the organization in the field will allow us to see the uh, existing challenges. And that experience is going to, at the same time, we a feedback to solve the critical problems. And also, they have the capacity to solve informally many of their day after day problems. So we need to study this and understand it. And the new experiences are also important. And these new experiences will help to that organizational tacit knowledge. Experiences from the high command, those who have been many years in the army, are going to be different from the young officers and all the members at all levels. So it's the whole knowledge which matters, because that's going to teach us the different sides of a problem and the best way to reach our goals. Of course, doing what we are doing comes with some warnings. Right now we are studying the whole environment, the field, they uh, how the Canadian military operates. So this is just going to be a snapshot, one snapshot of instant view of the tacit experience of knowledge. And that can be tricky if we don't take care of that. So we need to have a method always reassessing this uh, territory. So when we are defining the organic method, we want to turn it into a doctrine, but it's also important to keep this reassessment, some evaluation mechanism, so we won't uh, let the, the doctrine will be very rigid or stringent. And then what we are doing is to create a method that it, after some years is not going to be useful, or we're going to fall in the same problems we are criticizing right now. Mm, I want to mention how organic design comes in the from the literature, but. As my colleagues just mentioned before, what we are doing is very important. We start from scratch, from the basic knowledge, to understand the design ground, how open are the, how open is the Canadian army to design and how. And what language they're using right now on the way of cre creative uh, thinking, because sometimes they're doing it without knowing it. So what we are doing right now is from, the, from scratch, assessing this. And the idea is that we're going to be able to create a design method using this language, their own language, and that's one 
not necessarily one of design, but one that they can use, understand, and apply, and apply the design principles without calling it design. As I said before, it's not to um, generate some resistance from the new ones, but it's to define a formal method, the doctrine, and start using it. Again, assessing from scratch what we are doing right now. And there is a debate when to design and with whom. There is a difference between Ofra presentation versus Coronel Drew, who is engaged in design. Ofra, two generals from Israel engaged, and Coronel Drew, we see that are from different levels, majors, lieutenant colonels, and so on. And that's at different levels, so you need to train different levels. So we go to the point that it is important to present it at different levels, not just to the officers, but surgeons and those with operational capacity. But we believe that it's very important that they need to have some amount of experience in order to be able to understand the operational and organizational environment where they work. And of course, as I said, includes the empathy concept, at least a minimum understanding of all the stakeholders. And to conclude, organic design addresses specific uh, concept of a military organization, and that's better than uh, copy and paste from other concepts. Today, we are at two level designs, evaluating the application field and to define the organic uh, method framework. And we're confronting different tensions. The application test that we see with these established methods versus a costume-made design. We are aware that there is a tension there between the acceptance, local acceptance, let's say a small group, or a limited use in the organizations. We would like to see the design being used by different levels of staff understanding their own specific situation. Not just, again, okay, to learn methods for, from other areas is important, but you need to understand how you apply it to your own environment. And also, we, there is a tension between experience and rigidity, because sometimes those are hand-to-hand. -hand. So we need to find a way that we can use the experience, but let go with the rigid, rigidity from that experience. E so with that, I conclude, I finish, and let's go with the uh, questions. The next, please. Okay, yeah, thanks. Uh, thank you, Michelle. Uh, please, a big round of applause for Dr. Michelle. Thank you for this great, pr great presentation. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Okay. I was telling you, you just got to... A round of applause. And thank you for making us think about this organic design. So let us move on to some questions to then close with the discussion panel. Primero, eh, yo, yo veo, eh, Michelle, si me permites, eh, nos, nos puedes ayudar para que Coronel... Cho, can you help us so that Colonel Greer and Grant will understand? Okay, so I see 
that organic design is eclectic and that it has taken design theories from Israel, from the United States, and you have combined it to present a different way of looking at problems. Or, But I like this approach a lot, or this word rather, organic. And the question I want to ask you initially is, can you depend a little bit on the organic, how the word is connected? I don't know. How do you, would you rather me answering, Colonel, English or Spanish? Uh, perhaps in, in, in Spanish for those of us here, and if you can then translate to them. Thank you, Michel. Um, okay, that's a dual work. Okay, first. It's not just a combination of different methods. We do have a knowledge of the different methods that are there. We want to maintain it. But, for instance, there are differences, and it's not just a difference. I mean, it's not like you can break the combination and look at the individual parts. Or, and the, for instance, our in our perspective, it's several methods, several tools that can be used. It's not just one method established. It's like a stage one, you do this. Stage two, you do this and that. And stage four, it's not like that. It's more situation dependent. And these uh, different tools might arise and might be used. So what we're trying to look at is creating a method at the highest level so for instance you uh, in contrast to Colonel Greer's words, it is not something just that uh, something that can be repeated that is written and that is doctrine. yes, of course, on a high level. But when repeating a method, you will not be using the same tools as with others. In a rescue situation, it will be very different from a war. So the specific tools will change. So from an organic design standpoint, the organic part comes from the concept of grounded theory where we create and we start our investigation versus these discussions with the groups and this literature studies and while we discover different points With this discovery, we, we kind of go along creating our method. We create our design theory that is specific for the Canadian Armed Forces. So it's going to be a long process, not too long, we expect, but at least one or two years, where our methodology is first to conduct interviews with officers, what they're doing, what their expertise is. Not design, but decision-making experience, how they make decisions, how their thinking has changed with time. And what's interesting here is that we're seeing that many officers have created their own form of design without calling it design. They have several details 
that if you know design, you could say, hey, that's a design thinking there. So what we're discovering is what is it that they're doing and how their thinking has evolved with their experiences. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take several cases, different missions, and command, and we, we still haven't done it, but how these cases have influenced the thinking of officers and those present, and how it has affected other stakeholders. And there, we can once again expand our method considering the situations that the armed forces face. And as I was telling you, we're in a leadership crisis in Canada among the military. So this is going to affect how we do things. Because the new leaders will have to change their way of thinking, their way of acting, their way of disciplining other members of the military. So we're going to need to use this experience to inform what we're going to do rather than become rigid on how what we do because that's a problem. I don't know whether I'm explaining myself myself well. Well, now let me see what can I do with the translation. It's not necessary for you to translate. I mean, for those of you who don't know, Colonel Greer and Colonel Martin are also part of AOD. So they know these issues, they have discussed them. So we're not going to have him translate. So we're going to have you translate so that we can focus questions. So we, before we move on to the first question, this is that you're telling us about a leadership crisis in the Armed Forces of Canada. I was not aware, I'm not sure whether Alfra knew something. Well, Alfra knows it all. She knows. But that's why she's here. Um, but just a little history. The Armed Forces of Canada and the Canadian Army was in Normandy, June 6th, 1944. These are armed forces that have given us experiences. Of course, our long-standing armed conflict. And perhaps those of you who are not in the military and are connected, Mr. Rubin, many of our officers go to the Canadian Forces College to study and just like uh, the cadets military school here. I remember two or three years ago when a, an army officer ranked first in a course in Canada. So with this I want to tell you that there's a link between the Canadian Armed Forces and the Colombian Armed Forces uh, maybe an Air Force related issues. I'm not sure whether Colonel Gaitan or, uh, but there, I'm sure there's a connection. So let me move on to the question. Dear Michelle, what benefit would it bring for the Colombian Army to adopt the sign approach? facing certain volatile dynamics of the region, this region that we are located in. Okay, so let's get started with the benefits for the Canadian Army, and then let's see if we can transfer the example to the Colombian Army. So, 
As you said, the Canadian Army has broad experience, not only with Normandy, but it was one of the first to help keep peace from the UN side. As compared to US, it's a very, it's an army that is very good at doing a lot with little because of size, because of lack of resources, perhaps a little bit more, more technology, uh, more ancient technology in the United States. So, this are some of the benefits of the for the of the experience of the Canadian Armed Forces you know how to do more with less and officers and the soldiers are can do more things so that's an important context point And that is why we think that an organic method should be created for the Canadian Air Forces, because these capacities should be maintained and, uh, and broadened. Now, in Colombia, with respect to Colombia, I believe you have the knowledge, or you are have better knowledge about this, than we do. You have um, very broad experience in terms of irregular law, in terms of complex political and social contexts. Some things that other armed forces would might not have. So that means that your assumptions, your experience, and your organizational culture is quite specific and should not be ignored. Rather, it's something you should use to create this design and apply design tools to reach that point. So a simple form of saying this be what method and particularly what tools could you use to better use these experiences to identify problems and create solutions. So this is something that considering the U.S.'s or Israel's way of thinking, this are methods from different settings. It might be that a specific tool or philosophy might be used jointly, but creating all this method and marking it well needs to be more specific. Did I answer your question? I'm not sure. Yes, Ofra, would you like to add something else, perhaps? I think you did, and and just wanted to add, and Ofra mentioned this, I'm going to quote you here. Okay. And Colombia has more to offer than you shall think. So, if, for instance, we consider our experiences in Afghanistan and Middle East, I believe that your experiences in Colombia with irregular conflict with several groups would be quite useful in other areas. But of course, this is also considering the differences. So understanding your own capacities and having a design strategic method can help not only in a Colombian case, but also starting to take a look at what's similar and what's different from other settings because this can uh, bring things to our conscious mind. So this gives us the capacity of being more flexible on how we work. Great. Thank you, Michelle.